Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. I mean, I'm at my worst when I am sleep deprived. It is, you know, I just, it's so hard to avoid junk food, whereas probably the single greatest tool in my arsenal to eat well is to sleep well. I mean, it doesn't sound like that's an obvious thing, but it's amazing. When you, when when, you read the data, I mean, it's it's striking. And, you know, we can get into that, which is essentially what you've just described is the the energy balance of an organism of a human being and both the regulation of energy once you've taken it in and also the input of the energy or, and the selection of the energy. How do you eat and how much do you eat? And then secondly, once you've eaten, what does your body do with that food in terms of a basic kind of blood sugar control? And then the fourth thing is where do you access it? So you, right. I, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure this has been done. I just haven't seen it. But if you look at respiratory quotient of people sleep deprived versus not, I'm sure RQ must be going up, right? I'm sure they're absolutely going after the wrong fuel partitioning. That's exactly what you see. I'll do what you do well, but then I always forget to do. Let me explain why that matters. Respiratory quotient going up implies that under the same level of exertion, you would preferentially go after glycogen for ATP as opposed to fat. And so not only is that not what most people want because they prefer to burn their fat than burn their glucose, it signals a metabolic inefficiency, which lays at the heart of all of this stuff. And a beautiful example of that is a great study that looked at the efficiency of dieting when you are underslept. And effectively what they found is that your diet is all for nothing if you're not sleeping well. Because what they found is that when you are underslept, defined as sleeping six hours or less, 70% of the weight that you lose will come from lean muscle mass and not fat. In other words- Which is perfect when your cortisol is high. I mean, that's exactly uh, that's exact, So that's exactly what you'll see with cortisol. So in other words, your body becomes immensely stingy at giving up its fat. Your body will ruthlessly hold on to its fat when you are underslept and not give it away. Instead, it will. So, when you are underslept and you're losing weight, you're losing the thing that you want to keep, which is beautiful muscle definition. And you're holding on to the one thing you're trying to get rid of, which is the blubbery fat. And it's really everything it's the cortisol is working against you, insulin will work against you, you're going to have more hyperinsulinemia, you will have more catecholamines working against Correct. you. Yep, we see that with norepinephrine in particular. Oh, and testosterone will go down, that's going to work against adiposity getting rid of it. Yeah, I should note, by the way, that, you know, men, and we, I think we'll come on to this later, but, you know, men who are sleeping just five to six hours a night will have a level of testosterone, which is that of someone 10 years their senior. 